Please work. Yay, it works. OK. Hi, everyone. Um, welcome to this 15-minute um, talk that I'm giving. This is my first tech talk, so please bear with me. You know, it might not be perfect. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, so today uh, I'll be talking about teaching web development to beginners with Gatsby. So the previous speaker said he, he was like, I want my mom to be able to build this. Hopefully, you can teach your brothers or sisters. Maybe not your mom, because that might be a little bit too hard. But anyways, I am, as she said, an egg enthusiast and student. Um, I am looking for opportunities and stuff, because I'm graduating. So if you have any opportunity, please email me, daniel at ucdavis.edu, and that's my Twitter handle. But anyways, let's just jump right in. So I am representing my student club today uh, here at Gatsby Days. Um, we're called Bit Project. We're based out of Davis, California, the home of cows. We have around 70 uh, plus developers working on this project with around 3.1 oh, sorry, 3.1 thousand students reached. That still sounds really weird. Um, and our entire goal for existence is making developer education accessible. We want everyone to be able to be web developers because you know JavaScript is awesome. But anyways, um, so our club does two main things. We do technical workshops as well as coding boot camps. Um, so our technical workshops uh, empower organizers from all different types of meetups to offer quality technical workshops in their community. And our coding boot camps are completely free, and it provides tools for communities to offer specific technical boot camps in their community. And today, we'll be tackling how we made our modern web development course. So a couple of months ago, I was like, hey, we should probably teach web development. That's something that's really needed to get a good job, well paying, hopefully. And I was like, let's start making a web development course. So there was a challenge, though. We had to find the framework to teach, because we can't offer everything. We have limited resources. So we had a couple of kind of things that we need to look out for. So first, we need, it needed to be an industry standard. It needs to be adopted by a lot of people. It has to be doable. That's a really big one. It can't be something that's overly complicated. And the learning curve isn't insane. Also, it allows for something called structured creativity, which I'll talk about a little bit later. So that's me. And I was like, hey, friends, I want to teach you React. And here are the actual responses that I got. It seems too hard. I'll just stick with HTML, CSS. I tried out a hackathon, but the tutorials are five hours long. That is actually true. And then I tried creating React app, but really didn't get it. So these were the challenges I faced when trying to teach my friends React. So here's the main problem with just teaching React out of the box. It is too customizable, which may be great for developers. When you're first trying to learn React, it may be too difficult and overwhelming. So it makes it extremely easy at uh, React to make overcomplicate very simple projects. For teaching, it makes the job of the TA or me extremely miserable. And here's why. So I need all of these frameworks to build a simple website about me, you know, a portfolio website. You need Express to handle all the routing. You need Mongo to store your information, Node, Redux, NGNX, CloudFront, all of this stuff. And to be honest, for a beginner, this is too much information. You got to start with something that's very simple and then work from there. So this is what our office hours look like. This is a dramatic reenactment. Um, and so we decided not to do that. So here's our new idea, which was learning JavaScript with Gatsby. And let me tell you why we settled on Gatsby and why it's been so effective. So Gatsby has these four traits that make it really great. It has a very simple file structure that's really logical and understandable. It has something called hot reloading, which React has, but it's built into Gatsby, so it's great. It has great routing, and that means that I don't have to answer any more questions about routing, which I'll talk about later. And it's very easy to deploy. So here's the first reason why we picked uh, Gatsby over all of the other frameworks and kind of things out there. So on the right is kind of what you get when you make a create React app. You get a bunch of stuff that may or may not make sense to a lot of people, if you're, especially if you're coming from another stack. However, Gatsby, it's a lot simpler. There's things like pages, templates, things that we understand. So it makes a lot more sense to an average person than just create React app. That's like obstacle number one. Obstacle number two, students learn a lot better when they can visualize what they're working on. Um, if you have something like hot reloading, if you make a mistake, it will instantly like, show you, hey, this does work, or this doesn't work, which is great for someone who's starting to learn, so they can see exactly what their code is doing. Um, and routing is a very, very, very big reason why we picked Gatsby. 
So having routing taken care of us has reduced our visits to office hours by 30%. We cannot emphasize how much we love this feature about Gatsby. This has basically allowed us to scale our boot camps to offer to more people because this was causing so many issues during our open hours where we help uh, our developers like figure out and debug. This is awesome about Gatsby. This is my, one of my favorite features. And the last kind of reason, but not the least, is fast deployment. So students are able to push their sites to GitHub and connect it to Netlify. So it'll automatically build and make their site live. It was a feature that allowed students to like show off their progress to their parents, send it, post it on Facebook, all that. And it's very satisfying. So that's why we love Gatsby. So a couple, like I think it's a couple months ago, I started this course called Intro to React with Gatsby. We had eight students, which are all my friends. We had five weeks, and we built eight final projects. And here's what we did. We had a curriculum structure like this, where we had a guided exercise, where we would walk them through step by step how to use React in this, uh, in this instance. And then we would have them apply it to make their own portfolio app. And today, we'll go over all the guided exercise we did and how we structured our curriculum to teach React in a more effective way. So the first week, it was very simple. It was intro to HTML, CSS. We're assuming that these people have no experience in coding. So we built a static button. And we used CSS uh, to build a static button. It was emphasized on the CSS block model. And it had properties. It was really simple. Now, this is where React comes in and Gatsby. So we rewrote the button into a reusable component using Gatsby starter, like the starter codes on GitHub. And then we wrote the buttons to have different colors, text, and shapes by assigning different properties to them. So here comes the next reason why we picked Gatsby's plugins. Plug and play is the best way to teach beginners because they can add really cool features to their app without having to think about all the low-level stuff that might trip them up, which is a great way to keep them motivated and engaged in the course. If, they, if you can see yourself building something really cool, you're more likely to stay and then try, try harder uh, and less frustration. So we use this uh, plugin called Gatsby Plugin Styled Component. Um, to literally translate their CSS into Gatsby. The reason that we did this, uh, there are other styling like, options out there, but the reason we chose this is because this was the most directly integratable into the CSS they learned the week before. So now that button has a friend you know, with a different color and different shape. Uh, and then we have week three, which was states and animation. We call them crazy buttons. So we rewrote the button into a reusable component and had multiple animations of the buttons that change upon click. So this is the thing that I couldn't find anywhere else that I made myself. Um, we actually taught states through animation, which may be like, whoa, animation is really hard. But to be honest, it's not if you actually structure the uh, given code for them. So we combined enter and exit properties with current transition status defined in the transition link. If you haven't seen that uh, plugin, you should really try it out. It's awesome. Um, and if you wrap the button around this component, it just like, takes the function that will have access to the same uh, props that like, we talked about before with the transition list, which is really awesome. Uh, yeah, so we're using animations to teach states. That was like something I added, you know, it's animation. <laughs> and the fourth week is graphically rendered buttons. So it fetches all the buttons and their properties from the markdown files an extensive use of a graph IQL to build queries to fetch components. This is totally useless. This is not a real case study, but gives students like an idea of, hey, this is how I use GraphQL. This is a fun button. So I have a little demo. Oh, I don't have a demo yet. OK, so this is like an example of like the GraphQL query that they wrote to get all of the like properties of the button, such as bounce speed, face, color, and shape. And yeah, I have a demo called Gatsby Potatoes where these are all the buttons going crazy, and these are all rendered from the markdown files that we have in our Gatsby starter code. Yeah, they are really crazy. OK. And the last week, we used uh, the Gatsby source contentful plugin to make contentfully dancing buttons. You know, uh, so we're able to teach uh, in five weeks from going from intro to CSS and HTML all the way to pulling data from a content management system that that actually are all the skills you need to build a basic, graph, uh, basic Gatsby app. So yeah, we were able to change the color, speed of animation, type of animation, face, et cetera, et cetera, using the um, Contentful Source plugin. And I have a demo for that as well. So yeah, so um, 
like this is my model on Contentful of the potato. So we have bouncing speed, phase, color, et cetera, et cetera. And then I made a, uh, I made a content of all of the characteristics. And I click publish. It should like, um, so I already like saved this component because I didn't want like to have a technical difficulty, but this is like how it would look if it was like real. <laughs> but anyways, that's kind of like what the five week course was about. And to my very surprise, everyone turned in their project, their final project, which was a portfolio site. So here was some feedback that I got from the eight students. So it wasn't as hard as I thought. My website was really easy to debug because I could see what I was doing. This was like kind of really successful. And we have a lot of future plans. So we're rolling this curriculum out that we made to 50 plus students within the next year. We're going to flesh out the five week curriculum into an eight to 10 week curriculum because we found that we were getting rushed by the end um, because GraphQL can get a little nasty. Um, we also want to use our knowledge of uh, Gatsby to build websites for nonprofits and charities. And we want to offer this eventually as a student led class at UC Davis. So that's basically. It for me. Thank you all for my first tech talk.